Okay, so hi everybody. Um, I know we're a couple minutes early, but I thought I'd go ahead and get started. And then if we end early, then you have a few more minutes to chat, right? So my name is Perry Collins. I've been designing websites since 1999, fresh out of high school. And uh, over the past couple of years, I've been privileged to work at several publications, and they really are very data-driven. And they get this data with the analytics. And so I got very excited about it, and I wanted to share it with you guys and let you know what I think is so cool about it and the useful things that you can do with it. So um, we're going to go over a lot of information today. Don't be scared. It's just words. We can always Google it later, replay this later. <laughs> you know, I see people trying to scribble down every last word. You don't really need to do a lot of that. Um, what I just want to tell you is that analytics is just a word. All it means is data about your website. So it's just the numbers, and we're going to learn what those numbers are, what kind of information Google tracks, and how you can use that. So the kinds of things that you can use analytics for are to see what people find interesting on your website, what they don't find interesting, what's making them leave. Um, you can also track any online ads you might have, like Facebook ads or AdWords, or um, maybe you put an ad in your local newspaper website and you want to see how that's doing. Um, also, your newsletters, any links you put in your newsletter can also be tracked using Google Analytics. So, before I get started, I'm going to go over some vocabulary and I'll let you hand this out. If you don't mind passing those around. I like handouts, so I'm going to take home for you guys to remember. <laughs> and um, so, while she's passing that out, let me just uh, tell uh -huh. you. They're just going down the line. That's okay. We'll take our time. We're not to that part yet, all right? <laughs> so um, why would you choose Google Analytics? Well, first of all, it's free, and that's my kind of price, right? So, so it's a good bang for your buck. They give you a lot of information and insights on your readers and your customers, and it helps you identify strong and weak areas of your website. Now, there are other analytics companies out there, um, but I feel like they're very expensive to get the same quality of information you can get from Google. So I, I highly recommend Google. Um, so before we get started, though, I did hand you a vocabulary sheet. I'm going to read the definitions off for you word for word, but I just want to give you guys an idea of what the terms mean. Don't be afraid because they're big words. Um, so when we, when we go through Google Analytics um, and I talk about them, you'll know what they mean. All right, so um, does everybody have a pink sheet? No. Did we run out? No, we have a question. Oh, I just paused it. Oh, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> that's the end of the day. I got it. Oh, got it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you need one, Robert? Okay. You can give us directions on passing. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize that had to be very specific. <laughs> they, they wanted me to pass it out. Thank you for helping me out. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm not used to working with such a large group. <laughs> so, but now I know to tell people exactly how I wanted them handed out. <laughs> Normally they can do that themselves. So. <laughs> Must be all the caffeine for this lunch. This is a special group. <laughs> so these are some common terms that you will come across, and I'm just going to break them down real quickly for you. Um, dimensions. So dimensions is something that's measured but not in numbers. So you could say it's like what browser you're using, um, whether you're on a mobile device, what country you're coming from. So they usually answer the question like what, what is it as opposed to how many. Um, where the metric is a number, it's how many. So um, a lot of people use these terms interchangeably, but if you're looking for any help on the Google support forums, you'll want to know what these words mean. So metrics are the numbers. They're how many people, how many left, um, what percentage uh, is a return visitor. Okay, sessions. Sessions are the number of visits that you are getting within a time frame. So everything in Google Analytics is in a time frame. So this week, this day, this month, this hour, um, how many people visited is a session. And users are, of course, one person on one device. So they're usually tracked by IP addresses. So if you look at a site on your mobile phone and then go home that same day and look at a site on your home computer, those are considered two different users because you're coming from two different places and two different IP addresses. 
page views. So page views is the number of times a page on your website is viewed. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, pages per session. So that's a measurement of how many pages on your website one person is seeing uh, during the time period that they're on your website. Also pretty self-explanatory. Um, <coughs> average session duration. How long are these people on your site? Um, bounce rate. So bounce rate is how many people come to your site and then immediately leave without looking around or clicking on things or reading reading things. So that's called your bounce rate. It's just like one and done. They come, they leave. Can, so this is for a single page. So, so there isn't such a thing as a measurement of if they go to two pages and then they leave. Right, so if they go to two pages, they're not considered bounced. So they're, th then you would see pages per session. That would total into that number. So is there a way to tell which page people are leaving on? Yes, okay. and we will get to that because that's very interesting. Um, no, that's no problem. If you have any questions at any time, just raise your hand. Um, new sessions are new people coming to see you who are starting a, a new time period, spending time with your website. Okay, goals. So if you want to get really in-depth, goals is where it's at. So a goal is an actionable event on your website. Like someone bought something, someone signed up for your newsletter, um, somebody was thanked, or um, there's a, there's a lot of different goals you can set. Um, somebody downloaded your ebook, so some kind of action that they took that can be measured that's called a goal, and those are things that you set up yourself. Conversions, um, conversions are the number of times that your goal was completed. So if you get someone on your website. The number of times um, your ebook is downloaded, the number of times they sign up for your newsletter, that's the number of conversions. Okay, campaigns. So, campaigns is a fancy word, but all it really means is a special URL. You can get Google to give you a special URL where you can track certain um, links. And we'll get more into that because campaigns are something that I use all the time, and I think you should too. Okay, acquisition just means where the people are coming from, where did you get them, where, how did they find you. And behavior is what they're doing when they're on your website. Whether, are they clicking on stuff, are they reading stuff, are they playing videos. So um, all these are on socialmediaexaminer.com, but I just printed them out for you. So I'm going to head over to the back now, and we're going to get started. Also, just to let you know, um, if you have a Google account already, like Google+, Plus, Gmail, um, YouTube, you can use that same login to access analytics and set up an account, or you can use a different one. The website is just google.com slash analytics. See, I pulled it up here. Let's see, can you see my mouse? Mm -hmm. So I'll just point to things, and you can either create an account or sign in if you already have one. So I am going to sign into the Tech Phoenix account, and we are going to use that as our play thing today. So when you sign in, um, this will ask you which website you want to look at. And you can have more than one website on an account, more than one uh, thing you're tracking analytics for. But for Tech Phoenix, we only have the one website. And in order to access the data, we're just going to click on all website data down here. All right, so the first thing, let me just close that. Okay, so the first thing I want to draw your attention to over here in the corner is the date. And this is how we track analytics over certain time periods. And this date, if you look in the corner of every single panel we go over, it's going to be the same date. You could change it at any time. Let's say you want to look over the past year's worth of information or the past month or the past day, you just punch in the time and the date here. So we're going to do November 14 of 2013. So that was last year. So we'll get a year's worth of data. And you can see that there is um, a line chart here that tells us like when our little peaks are. We have a couple peaks here and where our valleys are. And this is just a general overview of this time period. If you scroll down, it also gives you a couple more default um, views and some default numbers here. And these, um, we can dig deeper into these, but these are just like a broad overview. So if you just want to check in real quick and see like how many page views you had over the last year, what your bounce rate is, um, you can get that information without having to dig deeper. And if you scroll down even further, 
it even breaks it down for you, language um, that the people are talking. So that would be what language your browser is in and if Google is tracking that information on your particular machine. So this is the data that Google is collecting. So lucky for us, 91% of TextPhoenix.com visitors <laughs> speak English or their browser is in the English language. Okay, so this right here is called a dashboard, and this is the default dashboard that everybody sees, unless you set up a custom dashboard. Um, I won't go through it step by step, but uh, let me just give you an example. So um, let's say, for example, you are the social media queen, and you don't care about all these other metrics like page views. You just want to know what social media networks your people are coming from. Well, you can set up a special dashboard, and let's see, I think I did this last night. If I did it right, here you go. So all the data is just all pertaining to social. And it will tell you like total traffic, um, which social networks are getting the most, you're getting the most traffic from. So for Tech Phoenix, let's see, it's the blue one, that's Twitter. And our second most popular place for our fans comes from Facebook. Um, the percentage of website traffic that comes from social. So we have 26.9% of techphoenix.com visitors are coming from social media. That's almost a third, that's a huge chunk. So that's definitely, if I was on the website committee, something that I would consider is drawing more people in from social. And you can see there are the different networks, Facebook, Google+. You can set up all kinds of custom dashboards. This is all the same information you'll get through by going through each one of the panels, but it's just in one convenient place. So maybe you have a client you're setting this up for and all they care about is social. Maybe all they care about is geography or um, demographics. And you can just set up different custom dashboards to whatever your liking is. Personally, I think the uh, standard one is just fine and that's the one I use all the time. Just the standard one when you, uh, just this one that it gives you it when you first flatter. log in. Right, because then the other one, it just covered social. This is giving you a big overview. When you set up your customized dashboards, you can put whatever information in there that you want. So it, it, the charts and things are going to look different because you're getting different information. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're just going to go down this, uh, this menu here on the side with all the different panels, and we'll go through them one by one, and I'll show you what they do. So that was our dashboards. Shortcuts is another thing. Um, if there is a certain uh, set of analytics that you access frequently, you can set up a shortcut to it instead of having to scroll down the menu and find it. So let's do an example. Um, let's say... <coughs> Okay, acquisition. We'll get to acquisition in a minute, but let's say, um, let's see, all traffic. No, 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 let's do behavior. Okay, so, so here are some metrics on the different pages of our website and how many people are visiting them. Let's say I wanna access this information all the time and I wanna set it as a shortcut. All I have to do is click over here on the top. Do you see this button here that says shortcut up at the top? Just click on it and it'll ask me what I want to call it. We'll call it all pages. And anytime I want to access that information, instead of having to scroll down to all the menus, it's right here in my shortcuts. So I just click on it and there it is. So again, I don't use it much because I do like going down into each one of these panels by themselves, but if it's something that maybe you want to set up for a client who's not as tech savvy, um, shortcuts, all you got to do is click on the uh, button and it will add it to shortcuts immediately. All right, so the next one on our list is intelligence events. So intelligence events are um, events that you can set alerts for. Maybe you want to know when a million people have come to your website, or you want to know when uh, a thousand people have downloaded your ebook or, or your new hit single or requested a free chapter of your new book. Um, this is like an alert. It will email you and let you know when that thing has happened. And they call them intelligence events. You can set it so that these things happen daily, like at what time of day do you hit 100 users, or at what time of day do you have like 500 people on your website at once. 
Um, and you can set up custom and automatic ones. We're not going to dig too deep in that because this is just a, a broad overview of Google Analytics. But I have a resource sheet for you at the end where you can get tutorials and more information on how to set these things up. All right, the next one on our list is real time. I bet you can guess what that one does. So if we click on real time, we can see right now, at this very moment, how many people are on the Tech Phoenix website? Uh -huh. Woo! Wow. Not <laughs> only can we see how many, <laughs> raise your hand. Uh -huh. it's probably somebody looking at the schedule. Oh, <laughs> oh it disappeared, it disappeared, that's so sad. But as you can see, that is real time. Yes, if you all go on right now, within a few seconds, this number will change. Oh, now you're going to try it. It's techphoenix.com. Oh, look at that. So if you scroll down here towards this top active pages, it will tell you where these people are on your website. So I can see that there are some people looking at the schedule. And this little slash here means home page. So if you see that slash, they don't write out the link. It's just the slash. So as you can see, like within seconds of you guys being online, it detects that you're there. And it tells me what page of the website you're on. Does this include webs uh, mobile websites? Yes. So any URL that is on your website that you're tracking, because there are ways to make Google not track them. But if they're being tracked, they're going to show up here, even the mobile URLs. And there's even a way, if your website is responsive, that you can tell how many people are mobile users and how many are using the desktop. <laughs> um, so this is just a brief overview of uh, what's going on in real time. So for example, maybe you're at an event and you want to see how many people are looking at the schedule. Or you want to see um, who is looking at their speaker bios and which speaker is getting the most attention. And you can see that here just at a, at a moment's glance. Okay, any more questions about the real time feature? No, that's really cool. That's, that's real. <laughs> Now, just to let you know, some of the people are not being tracked. If you have a browser that um, you have turned off the tracking on or you want to remain anonymous, um, maybe you're using torrents or something, um, you can turn that feature off. Some people use like Tor or Vidalia to block their, um, their information from getting out. So those people won't be counted. But um, people who, who, like the regular people, the regular people who don't know how to protect their privacy, these are them. So, um, and there are other things that you can dig into under real time, like where people are coming from. We could see all of you guys are in the United States. Um, and different things that you can click through and look on. So I know we're going through this quickly, but I want to tell you that it's all about clicking and reading, reading and clicking. You can't break this. You just got to dive in and click on stuff and figure out what it does. You won't break it. And if you do, call me and I will fix it. No charge. I promise. <laughs> but, um, yeah, this, this is how I feel people learn the best is by not being afraid and just, and just going for it. Okay. So we are on audience. All right. So audience um, breaks down some demographics of your, your readers and your visitors. Now, you need to take this with a grain of salt because Google does not track everyone. It only tracks the people who say that they are okay with their information being shared with third parties. And that's you. You're the third party in this. Um, so, for example, I worked at a publication. We would regularly get like a million hits a month. But our um, demographics only listed about 300 people. And so we can kind of get an idea of, you know, um, is the age range of your audience, does it skew like 45 to 55? Does it, um, is it mostly women? Are they mostly interested in sports or politics? And so Google has a little uh, slideshow here that tells you the kind of things that you can look at with demographics, um, gender, interest categories, and age ranges. Now, demographics is something special you have to set up. There's an extra line of code that you need. Um, but again, I have that on our reference sheet that I'm going to give you at the end of class if you want to dig into that. Again, you got to take it with a grain of salt. It's not like 100% accurate, but it gives you a nice broad overview of your audience. 
and you can target it by interest, um, geogra geography, so like are they on the East Coast, are they in Australia, um, different behaviors, different uh, devices that they're using, and so forth. And it will collect that information for you. So obviously we do not have it set up on techphoenix.com. We don't really need to dig that deep. We know our audience. All right, acquisition. So this is one of my favorite ones. Acquisition tells you where your visitors came from. And let's see, here's the overview page right here. And again, we're looking at the last year, November 14 of 2013 to 2014, and it breaks it down between direct, social, organic search, and referral, and other. So direct means people who came directly to your website. They typed in the URL, or they copied and pasted it. Um, social means they came from a social network like Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Organic search means um, that they searched for something on Google and came across your website. And a referral is other websites that are sending people to your site. So maybe a blogger wrote something about you or your company and linked it back to you. Or maybe somebody on Yelp had a bad experience and links back to your restaurant website. Or maybe someone's talking about books that changed their life and your book is on there and they link to your website. So that's how you find out who is linking to you. It's under referral. Now if we scroll down, we can see it broken down a little bit. And each one of these are links. And you can click on them to get more information. So um, let's, click, let's click on direct. And we have our, our uh, chart at the top, but um, I like the numbers down here at the bottom better. So this tells you where <coughs> people directly came to your website. And on every website I've ever worked on, this little slash here is the home page. The home page is number one. If you want to go to CNN, it's CNN.com. Google, it's Google.com. Almost everyone who comes to you direct is typing in your website name to get to you. And so I'd be very surprised if the number one spot was filled with something other than the home page. But you can see people are also coming uh, to directly to the schedule or to register. Now, some of these um, direct links are links that people save to their favorites. Some of them, again, were cut and pasted. Um, and these are, or I can't imagine somebody typing in this whole thing, but maybe they did, I don't know. <laughs> oh, also let me draw your attention down here towards the bottom. You'll see that there are 10 rows here, but there's more than 10 rows of information. It just shows me 10. It can show you up to 5,000 rows of information at one time. And so you can see all the links people are typing in directly to get to techphoenix.com's website or somewhere on there. All right, if we go back to our channels, let's see, let's go back. Here we go, our channels. We looked at the direct, let's look at the social. All right, so if we scroll down to the numbers, it will tell us Facebook. In the last year, 682 people came to us from Facebook, so we can see that's our number one network. Twitter, let's see, Twitter, 517 people came from Twitter. It breaks down all the networks <coughs> that it knows. Hey, look, Reddit. We never got on Reddit before. <coughs> so uh, again, if you want to see more than 10 rows, you just click on it and it will show you everything. I guess we only have 10 for social media. But sometimes you'll see like weird social media platforms from China that you never heard of. Those will show up on there too. All right, so um, let's see. If we go back to our... Um, Let's see, channels here. All right, organic search. So this is what people are typing in to a search engine to find our website. And lucky for us, it's mostly Tech Phoenix. But sometimes you'll see weird things. Maybe you blog on something very specific, like a very specific uh, town or a very specific um, cat toy. Um, sometimes people will search for those terms and land on your website. When I worked at the magazine, we did an article on nude yoga. Let me tell you, oh. nude yoga <laughs> is taking Valley by storm. That's all I have to say. I have to it. But it was like our number one search term for people to find our website. So we capitalized on it and did like nude uh, CrossFit and a couple of other. It was a lifestyle publication. But uh, you know, you can find out what people are looking for and give them more of that. At least that was, that was <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>
So that was the theory, but you can see some of the names of our speakers are here. Raffle, we promoted our raffle heavily last year, so you can see some of those terms. I know, that sounded terrible. Okay, so if we go back to channels, um, what was the last one here? Oh, referral. So these are other websites that are linking to you. Yeah, these charts, I never could read them. I'm a numbers person, I don't know about you. So I like to scroll down here and see the numbers. And these are some of the websites, like Smalt.com is an SEO firm, and I don't know why they keep linking to us, but if they're driving, if they are driving traffic to me, I don't care, as long as it's legit traffic. Um, Eventbrite, you can see because we had our ticket sales on Eventbrite, so people have gone there, clicked on a link, and come back to us to read more about us. Lanyard, it's a conference site. Uh, we have a listing on there, so people are coming to us from that. Lightning Octopus, he's got, yeah, he's a blogger. He's really cool, too. His name's Jonathan, and he uh, spoke last year, but he also does a blog about nerdy, geeky things to do in the Valley. So he linked to us, and he's sending traffic to us. So um, the way that you could use this, for example, if I see somebody reaching out to me, mentioning my company or me, <coughs> you can ask them, you know, uh, read their blog, comment on it. Um, ask them uh, to partner with you on something. Uh, what, what I did um, when I worked for a product development firm was anytime somebody mentioned our technology, I would send them a free copy. Those are the good days when you send free, free stuff out. But yeah, you, I would send them a free copy and say, hey, do you want to give this away? I heard that you, our technology was at the top of your wish list. Here's a free copy on me. And they would generate more buzz for our product. And, you know, again, if you're maybe like a restaurant or another service industry, if somebody is saying something bad about you, investigate, read about it, see what they're saying. And this is one way you can find out who is linking to you. All right, so um, those are all the channels. There was one more, but it said other. So other is unknown. We don't know who these other people are or what they're sending. Oh, yeah, we do. Here we go. I lied to you. All right, other is Twitter and Buffer. <coughs> I think that's what they are. Well, here, I found something new today. Okay, well, it just says Twitter and Buffer, which is weird because those should have gone in with the social media. I don't know. I've never seen that before. So there you guys surprised me. Yeah, usually those will show up um, under the social media channel. For some reason, they're showing up under other today. All right, so let's see. Channels, we went through the channels. Okay, campaigns over here on the side. It's under acquisitions. Now, campaigns are, oh, look, we have a couple in here. Surprise. All right, um, so campaigns are special URLs that you give to links. And let me give you an example. See, I copied and pasted one from Mashable, but I don't know if you can see this. So this is a link to a story that a website called Mashable did. But I want you to check out the last part of this link. Do you ever see links like this, especially like on social media? They have like a question mark and a bunch of other extra stuff after it. I always delete that. Right, and you can do that because it goes to the same place. But this stuff, this is a Google Analytics campaign, and it's telling Mashable's Google Analytics exactly where that link came from. So let me give you an example of how you would use a campaign. So let's say um, two different people, you want to reach out to them and promote your event. You want to reach out to previous attendees and previous speakers. So you go and you send them an email and you say, come register at techphoenix.com slash register. Right, so how do you know if it's the previous attendees or the previous speakers that are clicking on the link? How do you know which group you got more buzz from? Well, you would set up one of these specialized links, and it will tell, and Google Analytics will tell you. So actually, we can do one together. Um, let's pull up a browser here, and um, let's see. So the the name of the tool that Google uses, you can do these on your own, but I like using the tool, so I'm going to show you. I like tools. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. <laughs> So it's called the Google Campaigns URL Builder. So I'm just gonna go here into Google and type in Google Campaigns URL Builder. Just like that. And it'll be the first one that shows up. And if you look right here, the URL says support.google.com. So you know it's legit. 
There are other websites that offer a similar service. I'm sure they're just the same. They use the Google API, but I always go with Google because I like the legit stuff. And it tells you a little bit about campaigns and how to build these specialized URLs. But here's where the tool comes in handy. It's just a form and you fill it out. So let's do one together. Let's pick a website URL. So let's say, going along with my story, oh, I gotta put the HTTP in front of it. Let's say we're sending people to techphoenix.com slash register. Um, so you'll see that some of the information is required and there's little stars by it. That's the only stuff I ever fill out. I don't know what all that other stuff does. So I'm just being real and letting you know. Okay, so the campaign source. So let's say we're sending out a newsletter. Um, let's see, the medium, we're gonna call it a, uh, red, we'll just call it a link. And then let's see, the campaign name. So we're gonna call it um, Come Register. Oh, can't spell here. Okay. And then you just click submit and you see this link in this box right here? That's the link. So if I want to say, oh, you know, I should have been more specific. So we'll call it newsletter to um, previous attendees. Yeah, you want to be able to recognize it in Google Analytics. So it gives me, here we go, it gives me this specialized link right here. And when I link the thing in my, in my email, this is the link I want to use. And then I want to set up another one for the second email with a different link. And that way Google will tell me who's clicking on which links and which email. So here's another example for you. Let's say you write a blog post and you want to tweet it out once in the morning and once in the evening. How do you know which link they're clicking on, the morning one or the evening one? Well, if you give them specialized links, then you can see, are you getting more clicks in the morning or more in the evening? And that might help you decide what time of day to continue to send out those links. Tell you it tells you where the link came from and what time? It doesn't tell you what time. Well, you can narrow it down by... You can hour. narrow it down. I just find this a lot easier in order to separate your campaigns. You could do it that way, but I find the more detailed information you get, the easier it is to plan your next step. Yeah. It just, just kind of separates it. Right, so maybe, to maybe you want to put all the links <coughs> to all the previous attendees and all the newsletters and Facebooking and make that just one certain link and then all the ones to previous speakers another link. Yeah. So um, in multiple campaign, I mean in multiple platforms. So um, you can use it, this link for anything. It doesn't have to just be a one-time burner link. It can be something that you use constantly. Also, here's another one, another good way to use these links. Let's say um, you are a ghostwriter and you want to promote your services on CNN.com. They say, sure, send me your ad and the link you want the ad to go to. How do you know how many people are clicking on that ad? You have to depend on what the publication is telling you and they might be lying to you. This way, Google tracks them. So we could fill out one of these forms and we could call it, um, Let's say we call it CNN ad, and um, we can just leave that as a link, and we can call it um, come register. We can just use the same verbiage. So now we know that all the people who came through this link have come from that ad on CNN.com. Where do you put the link? So when, so when you, um, if you're doing self-serve ads, there will be a place where it asks you, where do you want this ad to link to? If you're talking to an ad representative, this is the link that you email them and tell them to link to. So it's they'll. Long, the, it's a long link. It's a long link, but the people on the front end don't see it. They just see your ad. Oh, I see. So Got it. when they click on the ad, that's what right. When they click on the ad, it will take them to uh, techphoenix.com/register, but all that extra information tells you that those people came from that ad. So you can see how successful that ad actually was and not depend on some other third party for those measurements. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the URL builder. Um, let's go back here to Google Analytics. Oh, that's another site I was gonna show you. Um, oh, we can go to that site. Okay, this is a newspaper in Phoenix called North Central News, and I'm gonna show you their analytics on the back end, just to switch it up a little from Tech Phoenix. So you can see that they're all the same on every platform, I mean on every website. Um, let's see, and let's put in some dates here. As you can see, I like yearly measurements. 
So we're just going to type in last year to this year and apply the measurements. So you see they get a little more peaks and valleys and traffic than the Tech Phoenix website gets. And let's see, we were looking at acquisition and let's see, we did campaigns. Okay, keywords. So there are two kinds of keywords. There's paid and organic. Uh, most of us use organic. I don't know about you, but I'm too cheap to shell out for AdWords, so I don't do paid. <laughs> but if you did, you can click on paid and see which words are getting the most traffic. But since we don't use that at the newspaper or at techphoenix.com, there's nothing in there. If you click on organic and scroll down, you can see what people are searching for that got them to your website. The majority of the time, it's going to be variations of your name or your company's name. Um, but you can also see, like down at the bottom, there's a Walmart that is opening on Central and Dunlap. It was a big deal. People kept reading about it. They kept finding it on our website. Perry, how come the top one says not provided? Do you have any idea what that was? Okay, so not, yeah, not provided is people who don't share their information with you. Oh, so they wow. found your website through search, but for some reason, they're not allowing Google to track that information. Okay. So they've turned off the tracking and you don't know what they're searching for. It's a way of, for them to retain anonymity. Anonymity? Anonymity. Anonymity, thank you. <laughs> Been talking too long today. Yeah. But, I mean, you can't get that information. So that's unfortunate on the marketing um, and tech side of things, but you do get plenty of other information that would help you out. Got it. Okay, thanks. Yes? You haven't said anything before, but when you have those peaks, can you check? Um, to see what it was, like is it a date or a specific time so you can tell what article or what, you know, what causes the really high peak? Sure. So let's see. How do I get back to my dashboard? All right. So let's say you want to see what this peak is right here. Yeah. So when you roll over it, it tells me that it's Wednesday, November 5th. Okay. So then I'm going to go up here and go to November 5th. Let's see. To November 5th. Apply that. And let's see, then we're going to, we haven't gotten there yet, but we're going to go down to behavior and um, site content, all pages, and it will tell us right here that this is a story that got all the traffic at the top. And that's why there was that peak. We had a peak of 281 people on the website that one particular day, and that this was the top story that drove them. As you can see, it's even higher than the homepage, the slash of the homepage. So whatever that story was, it was really important. A lot of people came to read about it. Okay, so let's see. We were on keywords, okay. So, um, oh yeah, we went over paid and organic. Um, also, if you do AdWords, there's a lot of AdWords stuff here. We're not gonna go over it because that's a whole nother topic. They'll take like two hours. But if you wanna track your AdWords stuff, you can do that on that side. All right, the next tab down is behavior. Where are you, behavior, behavior? Oh, there you are, down at the bottom. All right, so behavior is fun. I don't know about you, I have an interest in psychology and, and what, what drives people. Um, here's just a little overview, you know, um, the site content, the pages <laughs> that people are visiting. Oh, are we still only on the one day? Hold on, let me go back up here and change this back to a year. You just have prettier data with a year, you know what I'm saying? More to work with. Okay, here we go. Um, so it breaks it down for you. This is just an overview. You can dig into each one of these and get all this different information. But what I want to show you is the behavior flow, because this is really cool right here. So this is a map of your website. So I'm gonna walk over here up front real quick so I can point it out to you, because if you have any kind of sales funnel or anything going on, this tells you where the people came into your website from, what they clicked on next, what they clicked on after that, where they ended up. Oh, right, right. So um, it's very interesting. You see a lot of people coming up the, the slash, which is the home page. You know, what do they do after the home page? Well, 886 of them went to the print archives. 658 of them, I don't know, does that say business news? Um, some of them went back to the home page. Oh no, this one's from community. You just have to follow the lines, and if you click on each one of these, you can see the lines that jut out from you. So I'm gonna go, gonna go back here and click on them so you can see. But this is kind of like a big overview of where they're coming. So like here's somebody read about something that happened in Sunny Slope. Then they clicked on the business page, and then it ended. That's what the red means, it ended. So you can see that they're not being engaged after that particular um, 
thing that they read. So maybe you want to add some more links and encourage them to stick around on the site. It, it says, um, mm -hmm. first interaction, second interaction. Um, this is one visit, right? Yes. So in other words, I didn't get a cookie and want to come back and continue to say. No, that's correct. This is per uh, session. So if you start at uh, the home page and, and go to the archives today, but tomorrow you're still logged in and everything, you come to the home page and then you go to business. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there'll be two different sessions. Do you know if tracking cookies somehow can make it so that that continues on in the visit? Oh, that's good. I'm sure there is, but I personally have never used one. But um, that would be really interesting. And you know what, as a matter of fact, I think there is. Again, I've never used it, but for example, like Amazon, if you leave things in your shopping cart when you come back, it gives you a little notice. It tells you, hey, you left this in your cart, come buy it. And so I've seen that in other things too, like um, you're halfway through the checkout process. Did you want to check out right now? So I'm sure that there are programs that do that. I have never used them, but this would be <laughs> where you could see that information in Google Analytics. Any other questions? I just like visuals sometimes. You can see I like never thought that. I really like that. Like, I, I, I know you clicked on everything else. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, oh, now I'm going to So again, if you have like a sales <laughs> funnel, like you have a, a landing page geared towards teachers, and then you want them to sign up for your teacher newsletter, then you want them to buy <coughs> an Apple product or whatever, you can see the flow and how many people are falling for it. I mean, how many people are following the flow? <laughs> 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 So you trapped them. <laughs> hey, it's a it's a doggy dog world out there. Okay, so if we click on these, let's see, click, no, click. Okay, here we go. Highlight traffic through here. Explore. Oh no, explore traffic through here. Okay. Oh, it just stopped. Okay, that was only one. I know that was sad. Let me see one that continues on. Here we go. That was me and I. All right, so this will show you where people are going to from those pages. How come I can't click on any of these? Maybe is it highlight? All right, if you highlight it, it tells you exactly how it happens. And you can see them a little better. You can see all the crosses and where they're going. Is, is that what it is? <laughs> well, you can dig deep in that. Again, you can't break it. Go home, set it up, click on stuff. And maybe you can teach me something. Um, okay, so that's the behavior flow. This is the one I like. This is all pages. So right now it's only showing me 10 rows, but let's say I want to see 1,000. 1,000 blog posts I have made, and I want to see, you know, which ones are getting the most traffic, how much time on site are they spending, and things with, like, videos and multimedia, people stay on the site a little bit longer. Also, I didn't tell you, but these are... Um, what is it called? Organizable? Or you sortable. Sortable, thank you. I'm sorry. Let me get some water here. I'm dehydrated. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Uh, that memory. Yes, I'm trying. So um, these are sortable. So they're um, default sorted by page views, the number of page views each of these pages have gotten. But maybe I want to see the average time on the page. I want to see which page people are staying on the longest. And so it'll sort it for me. And as we can see, the home page, wait, that's not the home page. Oh, here we go. Candy can be toxic for pets, okay? That one got, that one got 30 minutes. No, 30 seconds? Wow, these times are terrible. Okay. So um, this, this particular story got 30 seconds the most. So as you can see, it takes longer than 30 seconds to read a page. So people are not reading these pages or reading these articles and these stories, and you can tell because of the amount of time spent. Now, this is just an average. People might be reading it, and it might be the bots that are bringing that number down. Um, you might want to know what the bounce rate is. So let's say we sort it by bounce rate, um, and the highest bounce rate. So the bounce rate is how many people came to the site and left immediately without clicking on anything, right? So the page that had the highest bounce rate are some attachments. So these could be ads or pictures. Um, let's see, this one was a search result, and you can tell because it's it got a question and an S and an equals, that means search. Um, celebration of artist Frida Kahlo, 
that one had a very high rate. People clicked and left without, you know, um, clicking on anything else. So um, you can sort them by different um, information that's important to you. I hear you guys giggling. I want to see your analytics, see if they're any better. <laughs> I know, right? Okay, so underneath all pages is content drill down over here in the menu. And um, this just gives you really a broader overview of your website and what people are looking at. So this, this particular feature, content drill down, sorts things by subdirectories. And so, um, for example, 2004 has gotten a lot more traffic than the home page in general. Like the print archives has gotten a lot more attention than community. So you see these are not actually pages, these are like categories and broad topics. And that might give you an idea of what your people are interested in, especially if you do a lot of different categories or tags on your website. Okay, so that was pretty self-explanatory. Um, landing pages. So landing pages is the page that people land on when they come to your website. It's not always the home page. Sometimes they find you through search engines or links that you send out. And these are our top home pages for northcentralnews.net. So um, again, the slash is number one. I very rarely see it when there's something else that's not the home page at the top. Again, unless it's nude yoga or something. <laughs> <laughs> so as we can see, um, here's an article about Sean Lee joins Hip Hipple Travers. So some guy joins some firm, right? This one got a lot of attention. So you gotta wonder, is this guy important? Is this firm important? Do we want to do another story on it? Is this what people want to read? Why did this get so much attention? You can see that it got 1,200 um, page views, or yeah, 1,200 page views. So, you know, this could alert you to some topic of interest that you didn't know that maybe you blogged about and your audience wants to see more of. So those are landing pages. Again, that's just the first page that people see when they come to your website. And exit pages are the last one they see when they leave your website. So let's say they're there, they read a few stories, they click around, they see the About Us, and then they leave. So the exit page um, would be like the About Us because that's the one that they left on. And if we scroll down, we can see the top 10, and again, you can make this list longer. Um, but it's the home page is number one. So people came, they saw the home page, or they ended up on the home page, and they left. Oh, that's kind of sad. It is sad, but it could alert you to some potential problems. What were people looking at when they decided to leave? So let me give you an example. Let's say you somebody tweets out a link to a site, and it's got really great information. Then you click on About Us, and you get an error message. So you leave. So 6,000 people do that. You look at your analytics, and you're like, why is everybody leaving when they get to our About page? Now you know there's something up. Or let's say you wrote a bio about your CEO and it sounds really racist and people read that and they leave. Then you know you need to just the Why do they Well, you can't know why, but you can know where and when. And which you can segment this out. Or is, it, is it mobile people leaving? Is there a problem with this page on mobile? That kind of thing. So it just, it just tells you what page they're on when they leave. If you see like a really high spike in something unusual, check it out. This is how you know. We had that happen with a client. Uh, uh -oh. with a friend of mine. And we were doing their building and their site and whatnot. And they wanted to do a redirect as opposed to a link to the new site. They had a new domain name new look. So people went to their old site and redirected to the new site and they thought, oh crap, we're on the wrong thing. So we had a very high bounce rate for almost three months on the home page. And they're like, why don't they like our home page? It's like, because they don't know who you are. We told you not to do it that way. Ah. Uh, have to re just uh, an actual relink with something on the page, like an error message that would say, oops, we've located to a new page. Wow. Click here. I and like that. Perfect. And that That's a good example. Yeah, I'm a fan of that. I like the, um, that, I like the uh, redirects with like a few seconds. So it'll tell you, you know, we've rebranded, here's our new website, yeah. if you don't do anything, you'll be redirected in a couple seconds. Yeah. So you, you tell people what you're going to do so they're not taken by surprise. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm going to have to use that example next time. <laughs> All right, so other things you can monitor are your site speed 
And to be honest with you, I never use Google Analytics for site speed. Um, I, my favorite tool is called Pingdom, P-I-N-G-D-O-M dot com. And uh, I highly recommend it. I think it's even better than Google. Um, it's on your resource list that I'm going to hand out here in a few minutes. So if you want to check on somebody else's site, so I do a lot of competitor, like, um, Intel stuff, so I'll look at their websites for the competitors and see are they loading slow or um, do they have uh, image issues and things like that. So Pingdom is really a great tool to break it down, um, but Google will also give you a little bit of an overview. So like this is a different browser and how many seconds it takes to load in these different browsers. <laughs> so for example, totally. yeah, Android oh. browser, I don't know. That is a browser for an older Android device before they started naming them. So, as you can see, it takes 37 seconds to load. It's oh, too long. Wow. Right. <laughs> but you have to think some of this technology is already on its way to becoming outdated. But if it's if you're like a business person and and your whole industry uses BlackBerry as well, then you know something is up and you got to make that number drop. <laughs> So, um, and here's some analytics up at the top, average page load time, average redirection time, things like that. It gives you a nice overview. I would check it out when I'm in analytics just because it's there. But again, if you're really focused on speed and what's slowing down your site, Pingdom is the place to go. Yeah. I'll, I'll have it ready for you. Don't worry. <laughs> or you can always email, call, Facebook or Twitter, Skype, whatever. I'm always available to answer questions. Okay, so um, do you have a search bar on your site? Well, you can tie it into Google Analytics and see what people are searching for on your site. Now, this one is not tied into Google Analytics, so we don't know. But that would be a really good tool to have if people are looking for a certain product and you don't have it, but you could easily get it. Why not keep them on your site by offering that product? Um, and there's a little bit of coding that you have to do to do that. Um, if you have a WordPress site, WordPress has its own search box that you can tie into Google Analytics. Also, Google offers their own search box that you can put on your website. It's just a little snippet of code. You just pop it in. There's a search box. How do and you connect it in WordPress? How do you connect it? You know what? Let me see if I have this on your resource list. <laughs> okay, that one I don't have. So, how to connect it in WordPress, the site search box. I couldn't tell you off the top of my head, but if you'd like to shoot me an email, I'll be happy to get back to you with some tutorials and step-by-step -step guides on how to do that. Okay, um, so that's the site search, and since it's not set up on either one of these sites, I can't really give you a visual on it. Um, oh, in-page analytics is the other thing I wanted to show you. So in-page analytics um, tells you what people are looking at on the page. And let's see, can I, uh, can I make this bigger? Let me see, there's a way to make this bigger. Show bubbles? No, that wasn't the one. Oh, browser size. No, this doesn't look like the one at my house. Okay, here we go, load in full view. All right, so this is the in-page analytics. And where are my analytics? I don't see you. Okay, this one's not showing up, my bad. Let me try on the Tech Phoenix website. In page analytics. All right. Yeah, Google's not always friendly to every single browser on every device. Um, but what this is going to show you is a picture of the page and some percentages next to each link that tell you how many people are clicking on what link. And it will in a second when it finishes loading. Here we go. <laughs> So you'll see little orange boxes show up. Where are you, little boxes? Oh, I don't see, oh, here they are. Here we go. So you'll see how many people on this page click on this link, and there are percentages on each one. So for example, a 10 Tech Phoenix has a 9.8% click-through rate. So maybe this needs to be highlighted a little more. Um, be a sponsor, not doing so good. Speak at Tech Phoenix, 3%. Be a volunteer, less than 1% of people are clicking on be a volunteer. So I'll oh, just let you know it's a great organization to volunteer with. I just want to shout out real quick. Let you know if you're interested, you should do that. Oh my gosh, I didn't realize we're running out of time. Oh, thank you. Okay, so just one more quick thing. 
You know, this was under an hour when I did this for my husband. I'm just letting you know. <laughs> All right, conversions and um, goals. So if you recall, like goals are actionable things that you make people that you make people that people do on your website, like buy something or download something. So here's where you would set up your goals um, to do that. Um, and let me pass out these resources because there's a link on here on how to set up goals. Yes. <laughs> All right. Also, just wanted to give you a little bit more shameless self promotion. <laughs> yes. I'll be out of your hair in just a minute. You're not. No, I'm here to listen. Oh, okay. So, I recently um, am a 100% self employed person doing website design. <laughs> Digitalmedia.com. I'll give you my card in just a minute. But on Black Friday, I'm having a sale on websites. So if you want a brand new spanking website, dirt cheap, better follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or sign up for my email newsletter. It's CollinsDigitalMedia.com. <laughs> no, I'm not announcing it until Black Friday, but I'm giving you guys a heads up. Just so you know. So um, here's my card. Feel free to take one and pass it down. Yes. And that is the end. I hope you learned something. If you have any questions, please email me. All right.
Oh, you're too kind. El Google dice la, la página web. La página. Oh, you know, I can just change the language in Google to Spanish. Yeah. But then it would take me twice as long to get any work done. Yeah. La página web. La página web. That's weird. I never heard that one before. Oh, uh, where'd you learn it? Well, no, that, 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 I was Googling it. Oh. The, um, web, website in Spanish. In Spanish. La página web. La página web. I guess that is what it is. <laughs> All right. Did I get everything? Yes. You got a few extra handouts here. That's okay. I'm glad I could be helpful. Yeah, it is cold. This really? Is I feel comfortable. No, don't throw it away. Put them downstairs unless somebody wants to grab them. Yeah. It is colored paper.